so right now we are in Xining it's 8 of 3 in the morning and we're going to get some breakfast breakfast right right so we're going to get some breakfast and have look at this ancient Chinese wall look at this ancient Chinese wall I think this is why they Hmm. It's the first time um, the restaurant that has sea. It's never happened. Normally they have B. I'm also I've also never been to a restaurant that has A. And this is my incredibly fastly quickly my this is the view from our room. And there's a track over there, there are people practicing Tai over here. There's a This is Dongguan Grand Mosque. Uh, it may not be the prettiest, but it is one of the largest ones in China. During Ramadan, as many as 300,000 people come here to pray. It has been open in 11th century, then rebuilt in late 14th century, again restarted during the Republic period, and as you can see now, it's still being reconstructed. But you can see in the beautiful minarets so all of those rumors about Muslim persecution and mosques being demolished all around China <laughs> you know you don't you don't have to believe everything you find on the internet you always have to take everything with a bit of a grain of salt yes you have to go and see Muslim district of a Muslim minority town, so that's not a surprise. We're going to go to a copper shop to see things made of copper. Probably handmade. One thing I've learned recently is about this bug. This is a bug that hides in a grass. And then when it dies, it looks like a bug, but it's a grass. Yeah. We've greeted each other in three different languages. Uh, goats, goats are kind of scary. Those things are quite nice, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I will not. In many other cities in China, you will not see street sellers walking with things like this anymore. This one, this one has an assortment of brushes, toilet equipment. No, hey! Oh, you're pregnant! That's why. We are continuing our journey, but 
。Those are I don't know. Uh, let's go and see. I thought those are oranges, but those are peaches. Oh, I'm gonna say peaches. Peaches. This is orange. Yeah, orange. This is a yellow peach. You want yellow peach? Oh, you wanna look? Have a look here. There we have beautiful halal tea. We have bean, freshly made bean, we have meat. Oh, this is quite an interesting street. A lot of Muslim things. Uh, kimchi. I haven't seen kimchi in years. It's not kimchi. It's shibei. Uh, I know this is the those are green wheat when they are still green. Oh, this is the thing that I like very much. Yes, it's green. Okay. You steam them I know, and I know. then you use this, you make them very delicious. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Place where they have yogurt, homemade yogurt. Mm -hmm. it smells very local. You first try. Looks like this. My wife says you try first and then she takes the first very call. Very delicious. Really? Mm -hmm. Real, real milk. We found a local handmade yogurt shop it's really really handmade look delicious this is really really delicious yogurt and a very good price three RMB for this small ball you can still see those it's like a bit of cheese in on the surface it's yellowish the fat from the milk it's so milky that I couldn't eat it. So now we are going to explore surrounding area. Um, what is the most noticeable difference for you between Leyan and Xinin? It's cool here. Look, I'm walking. Oh, sorry. Complete lack of scooters and bicycles to rent. Let's go on the I, side. Let's go here near the shops. Okay. Yeah, I want to show people what they have here. All of those amazing shops with canned food. And look at those beautiful doors. Milky things, yogurt, steaming chickens. My lost wife. Now let's go on the sidewalk.
so right now we are waiting for the bus to go to a Tibetan museum or a museum of Tibetan culture and here we are on the street Xiang Li La which would be translated to English as Shangri-La Street this year was 100th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China and almost everywhere around China you can find those temporary monuments and now we are going to this Tibetan culture museum there we see a Tibetan monk checking his shoes so Tibetan medicine museum of China and then a bit further it says Qinghai Tibetan culture museum so right now we are in the Tibetan culture museum uh, I, have, I have to I have to wait for my wife to come in uh, she had to go and register for a tour group uh, to enter this museum every foreigner has to be vaccinated does every Chinese have to be vaccinated? no, only foreigners <laughs> alright, so we are entering the first and we see those Tibetan drums but they are immovable which is quite strange but that's what they are uh, the Tibetan medicine, the Indian Veda medicine, traditional Western medicine and Chinese herbal medicine are known as the four traditional medicines throughout the world. The Tibetan medicine is a unique medicinal system formed and established by the ancient Tibetan people on Qinghai Tibet Plateau through accumulating their own medical experiences and deriving the cream of traditional European and Asian medicine and is one of the great legacies contributed to the work by the Tibetan people. The profound cultural development processes of the Tibetan medicine are reappeared here through these rich pictures, restored scenes and multimedia as well as others. The Tibetan medical system is one of the world's oldest known medical tradition, with a history going back approximately 4,000 years. It is said that in early times Tibetan people applied barley leaf over the process of brewing Chang, Tibetan barley beer, and swellings, drank hot water in the case of indigestion, and used malted butter to stop bleeding and on wounds. These practices developed from experience in daily life and they formed the basis for the development of the art of healing which then eventually developed into complete medical system, the Tibetan medical system. The system is logically sound and its theoretical framework unique in its diagnostic techniques and holistic in its treatments with equal focus on both physical and psychological conditions. Where are we now? Uh, museum of Tibetan culture. Finally, not just medicine culture. culture. Yes, and we are beginning from the fourth floor. So we have to first press button four. They don't want yeah, to. Yeah, they don't us. want to. They don't want to go with us. They saw a foreigner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to rain. I bought a rain jacket today. My wife didn't. <laughs> the great tanka painting of Tibetan culture and art is a remarkable piece of art made possible because of the joint effort and support from many people. Initiated with persistence and passions by the prominent Tibetan artist Tandro Rabriel, the magnificent project was undertaken by artists and scholars from Rebgong, the heartland of Tibetan Buddhist area in Amdo, 
as well as those from other regions of the Tibetan Plateau. It probably would have taken one artist 500 years to complete. Instead, an army of fellow artists was called upon to embark on this ambitious encyclopedia of Tibetan culture, history and religion through paintings. The great Tanka took nearly 400 artists and a total of 27 years to complete since the idea was raised. It unfolds to a length of 618 meters and width of 2.5 meters and therefore holds the Guinness record for its extraordinary length. The artists here use traditional Tibetan painting techniques, natural mineral powders from coral, jade, turquoise, gold and others for coloring, cotton cloth for the painting canvas and silk for the embroideries. From a Tibetan Buddhist perspective, adhering to references from Tibetan classical texts, it comprehensively records and exquisitely presents the Tibetan view of the evolution of the universe and human life. Tibetan dynasties and great kings, the original religion of Bon and Buddhism, Buddha and Bodhisattvas, the great gurus and fierce protectors, Tibetan medicine and astronomy, and folkways and costumes, in a spectacular snapshot style, the great Tanka presents all things significant to Tibetans. small exhibition about the Jun dynasty ruled Tibet from 1900 BC to 7th century AD. Uh, the most significant thing about them is that uh, during their time people in Tibet practiced the so-called Bon religion and not yet Buddhism. Uh, nowadays, Bon religion is uh, marginalized, however, there are still people who practice it both in Tibet and Tibetan diaspora around the world. This is continuation of the Silk Road exhibition, but this is a bit later. Look at those fierce warriors.
this is also a certain point. What happened the horse bottom? All right, but this is this looks much more colorful. So. Um, this is an eye salon. Uh, this looks like it was used in battle. This one traveled here as well, despite the justice. Iron? I do see. Yeah. And silver. Okay. Beautiful. This is how our dinner looks like. Um, okay. How does it taste like? Numb. Numb. Uh, we've exchanged that restaurant for our hostel, which I think is much more comfortable than that restaurant with its smoky atmosphere. Well, although my wife said numbing, I think this dish is good. Although my wife said numbing, I think this dish deserves more description. So we have some green vegetable, we have some seaweed, we have meat, mushroom, mushrooms as well, we have bean sprouts, uh, there are some noodles there, oh here there are. It's called tranfen. Tranfen. Uh, and of course there's a lot a lot of peppers so this is very very spicy dish but also incredibly delicious um, the green vegetables here are also quite nice so in my opinion the restaurant's cook is good despite the atmosphere being just so-so